Hi there! In this video, I'm going to talk about how I made the image that won me these gold medals. You may remember me mentioning in a video that I did a few months ago that I'd won a national competition with an image that I'd constructed in Photoshop. So I thought it'd be quite interesting for you today to look at how I constructed that image in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is talk you through all of the processes. Now when I joined a camera club about 10 years ago, I'd never even considered the use of Photoshop to create images like I do now, but we had a lecture very early on from um, somebody that did digital creations and it really inspired my imagination. So what I want to do in this video is just give you a little bit of an insight into how I created it, not necessarily as a tutorial, but just to maybe inspire you to do something a little bit different. So sit back and hopefully I'll give you a different way of enjoying your photography. So you can see that the initial image that I got straight out of the camera is not the best because it's a very messy background, but the girl herself is what I'm really interested in. She's got a very wistful expression on her face and I like her pose, it's very natural. So the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to cut her out of the background. And now this is fairly simple in Photoshop. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to make a copy of my original picture because I don't want to damage that. So I just drag that down over the top of the plus sign at the bottom of the layers palette and that makes a copy. Then I'm going to go over to the left hand toolbar and select the magic one tool. Now this is useful in quite a few situations. Some situations it doesn't really work very well, but there is a new function in Photoshop that's been introduced fairly recently called Select Subject. And that's at the top here. If I click that, Photoshop will do a little bit of thinking, but then magically the subject becomes selected. It can spot um, a subject in the, the frame and it's done a pretty decent job of selecting the subject. Even if we go in close, there's most of the hair in even. Now we can refine that by going to the select and mask um, button. And if I select this button over here, which is called the refine edge tool, I can just go around the edge of the hair and this will just pick up all of the little fine wisps of hair and just make that a little bit more believable around the edge. But for now, that is pretty good. I'll click OK and that's selected the girl. I can just do a copy and paste then, which is a Control and V, and that has put her onto her own new layer, cut out really well. So this photograph went through quite a lot of different iterations. You can see from this photograph, it's nothing like my final version. I put the girl into some woodland that I'd taken a photograph of and I had done some alterations. You can see from the layer palette down on the right hand side that there's quite a lot of work I did at this, but I just didn't really feel like it was working. So I ended up scrapping that and then I moved on to this image. Now I did enter this in one of the camera club competitions and it didn't do particularly well. Again, I've just put her into a scene that I took in Italy. Um, it was okay, but it wasn't particularly satisfying. So then I tried it again in a different setting. Now with this, I've worked quite a lot harder to make the lighting work. I added a bit of mist to the background it's quite dark and it probably needed a little bit of extra work, but I stopped at a point where I still didn't feel it was working. And finally, I got to this, which is my final image that actually did really well in the competition. So that's what I'm going to take you through now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all of the layers. Now you can do this very simply by just clicking on the eye um, icons in the layer palette, dragging down with a button held in and it will turn off all of the layers. So there's nothing turned on at the moment. Now if I just click on this bottom layer, which is the background layer, you can see 
the background itself. Now this is actually made up of quite a few different images. So let's just expand that group there because it, I find it useful to group my layers together because the layer palette can get very, very big if you don't do that. Um, and so there are quite a few layers. And if I turn those off, you can see my original image now was on a quite bright day and that's nothing like the final image looks like. So what I needed to do first of all is get rid of that bright sky and put a more moody sky in there but you can see what happens when you do that is that the lighting doesn't quite work because there was quite strong sunlight on those hills in the background the dark sky doesn't really work so what I needed to do is put a dark layer over the top of the the hills to really make them seem in shadow and very dark and moody. Then I did various other things such as I added the castle but that needed to be made darker so it pushed it more into silhouette. I also then added a little bit of mist and smoke um, just to um, give it a little bit more atmosphere. I know I always get criticized for putting birds in my shot but it's almost like a signature so I stuck a red kite there into the shot and that pretty much is the background sorted. Now I realize I'm going through this at quite a breakneck speed because overall this entire edit probably took the best part of five or six hours just to fine tune it and just keep adding things. Now I'm going through it in a fairly um, ordered sequence. Now that's not how it happened when I actually did it. I might have done one thing and gone back and changed something in a, a lot more random order than I'm showing you at the moment. I certainly wouldn't have done it exactly like this. And my technique now has developed from when I first created this um, composition. What I would probably do is I would change this background to make it more moody and give it the correct colours at this point rather than doing it later. But you'll see that happen in the same order roughly that I did it in a few minutes. So the next thing that I would do is add the girl. So if I go to this layer here and turn that on, you can see now the girl appears um, but again, she is made up of lots and lots of different layers. So if I expand that group and just turn off those layers, you can see how I constructed those. So oh, I've missed some hair, let's turn the hair off. So the first thing that I would have done is put the girl in. Because she stood on grass from the first image, that really helps to ground her on the floor. But what I've done is I've just added a little bit of the original grass there in front of her just to make that shadow a little bit more believable. Always with um, trying to put a person into a shot like this, it's really important to have a shadow to make it believable and think about the direction of the light. So you can see the difference with the shadow and without the shadow. It, feels like she's anchored to the ground a lot more. So what we're going to do then, the rest of this is mainly just changing the lighting um, to make it fit. But you can see the first thing that I did was added a little bit of extra skirt. So I copied a bit of the skirt that already existed and I stretched it out because of what that does is it makes it feel like the wind is blowing through a skirt. Then I put a bit more shadow change the lighting slightly so it appears like she fits in the scene much more and what really sells this image is when I put some hair on the girl as well. Look at this, let's just zoom in so you can see that hair. But the hair there was drawn by hand. So I've got a stylus and a tablet so that was literally drawn a hair at a time with a very thin brush. So what I did was I sampled a colour from the girl's actual hair and drew a few strands of that. Then I cut, took a different colour and drew a few more strands of that and just built it up over a long period of time to make it really believable. But you can see the difference by having the hair blowing and not having the hair blowing. It just makes the whole image a lot more dynamic. Now the, the main thing with a composition is to make all the elements feel like they fit together and were taken as one photograph. Now at the moment, the colors on this image don't totally match. The, for me, they're too saturated. It doesn't have a lot of mood. So I've got a final um, 
group of edits that I've called the effects. And so adding all of these can really massively change the mood of the image. So if we go through all of these, um, some of them will be barely noticeable, but you can see um, this one here darkens down the girl because she's quite bright and stands out quite a lot against the foreground. So matching the lighting conditions so she feels like she's part of the same image was really important. Then what we're going to do is add a little bit of light. If you just look on her left shoulder, this is just done with increasing the levels in that area, but it's matching the direction of the light coming from the left hand side. So it just feels more believable. Then what I did was desaturated the whole image. So if you look at the difference between the bright green of the grass compared with this where it's been desaturated, it just holds together so much more. Um, I then darkened down the sky a little bit more. So it's almost a vignette, but it's only applied to the top and the bottom of the image. It just pushes your eye towards the center. A um, bit more darkness. Um, then within Camera Raw, what I did was take out a little bit more saturation, probably just pushed up the texture and the clarity a little bit more just to make it pop. Now in this next layer, this was really important. I just darkened down um, the rocks because if you can see now without the darkening, those rocks are quite bright and they draw your attention away from the, the focus of the girl. That's really where we want to be looking at. So when the rocks are bright, it really draws your attention to them. But when I darken them, it pushes your attention back to the girl where we want to focus. So then I've got another filter that I used, which was a soft blur. It just makes the whole thing a little bit softer. Then a glamour glow, which makes the highlights just pop out a little bit more. That's quite a useful um, filter to apply because it just gives the whole thing a little bit more vibrancy. And then the odd just tweak of the saturation, just so I'm happy with it, a little bit more mist. And there we go. I've combined all of those layers together. And what we've got there is our final image. I did go through that editing process at quite a breakneck speed. Now this video wasn't designed to be a tutorial. Literally, I just wanted to give you an impression of everything that I did to create this composition just to give you a feel for everything that's involved in this kind of work. But if you'd be interested in me doing more Photoshop videos at a slower pace and explaining some of these techniques a little bit more clearly, do let me know down below in the comments and I'll try and see what I can do. I hope you found this video useful and it's maybe given you a few ideas of something different you can try. Remember with photography, there are so many different genres. Landscape and wildlife are only two that I focus on mainly on this channel, but the Photoshop work, the macro work, the astro work, there are so many different possibilities you can have a look at. And really what you need to do is just find something that you enjoy. If you have enjoyed this video or have any questions about anything that I've covered, do let me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Instagram account. That's at the Oakton Photography. You can leave me your comments there and you can also see lots of my pictures. Now, if you like what I do on the channel, you can support me by visiting my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer. So go and check that out. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications. That really helps me out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any of my future content. Watch out for next week's video. That goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, go and check out this video up here. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe and I'll see you soon.